Reverend fathers, religious brothers and sisters, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I have been asked to propose to you some reflections on faithfulness to vocation, priesthood, consecrated life, and marriage. And this topic is very, very suitable for Father Bernard's 50 years of priesthood and his reception of the Papal Fidelity Medal, John Paul II. Faithfulness to, the vo to vocation, whichever that vocation is, priesthood, consecrated life, or marriage. The basic principles are the same. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life, said the Lord to the angel of the church in Smyrna in the book of Revelation. That means to the bishop of Smyrna. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Brothers and sisters, faithfulness to the state of life to which God has called us is a very important consideration in our service of God. Faithfulness and constancy. This applies to the three major vocations, priesthood, consecrated life, or marriage. In reflecting on this vital dimension of our Christian life, let us begin with adoring God, who is ever faithful. Holy Scripture extols faithfulness, and there are general characteristics which identify faithfulness in one's vocation. But to be faithful and to remain so, one has to be willing to adopt the means to faithfulness. These will now be the points for our reflection. So to begin, God is for us a model in how to be faithful. God is being itself. At the request of Moses, God revealed his name. I am who I am. And he said, Say this to the sons of Israel. I am has sent me to you. Exodus. And the Catechism of the Catholic Church says, God is he who is from everlasting to everlasting and as such remains ever faithful to himself and to his promises. You can rely on God. He is abounding in love and faithfulness. Exodus. In God, there is no variation or shadow due to change. St. James. God is love. He is therefore righteous and faithful. He cannot contradict himself. He must remember his marvelous deeds since his glory is at stake. And he cannot forsake this people that bears his name. So the Catechism of the Catholic Church. God is all-powerful. He is also goodness itself. He is therefore both able and willing to fulfill his promises. Some of us sometimes are able to fulfill our promises, but we are not willing. And some are willing, but not able. But God is both willing and able to fulfill his promises. His goodness makes him lavish with his gifts to us without any merit of ours. God's love for us is preemptive. It goes before. God is faithful by whom you were called, St. Paul tells the Corinthians. He who calls you is faithful, St. Paul tells the Thessalonians. Jesus Christ is called by the book of Revelation, the faithful and true witness. Faithful 
and true. Holy Scripture extols faithfulness and condemns those who are unfaithful. Holy Scripture holds faithfulness in high esteem and demands it of those who have made promises to God. Catechism of Catholic Church, fidelity to promises made to God is a sign of the respect owed to the divine majesty and is a love for a faithful God. Vows are given a prominent place in the service of God, right from the old covenant. In the book of canon law, a vow is a deliberate and free promise made to God concerning a possible and better good, which must be fulfilled by reason of the virtue of religion. People about to be ordained priests make vows. People about to be professed as religious brothers and sisters, monks and nuns, make vows. People about to marry make vows. The vow is a solemn promise made to God. Faithfulness is necessary. Through Moses, God commands the sons of Israel in the book of Numbers. When a man vows a vow to the Lord or swears an oath to bind himself by a pledge, he shall not break his word. Deuteronomy insists, when you make a vow to the Lord, you are God, you shall not be slack to pay it. For the Lord your God will surely require it of you, and it would be a sin in you. But if you refrain from vowing, it shall not be a sin in you. That means, if you promise, then you have to fulfill. If you find you will not be ready to fulfill, then you should not make the vow. Ecclesiastes does not tolerate those who break their vows. It says, when you vow a vow to God, do not delay paying it, for he has no pleasure in fools. <laughs> Ecclesiastes calls fools, those who make promise to God, and forget. Pay what you vow. It is better you should not vow than that you should vow and not pay, says Ecclesiastes. The Lord Jesus praises the faithful and wise steward, whom his master finds constant at his assignment when the master returns. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. This is the praise reserved by Lord Jesus to those who have proved faithful, whether those people be priests or religious or married people. On the other hand, the one who has abandoned the love he had at first is blamed in the book of Revelation. So is the lax, the lazy, the lethargic, the one who is neither hot nor cold. Book of Revelation. Would that you were hot or cold. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spew you out of my mouth. Spit you out. That's rather strong language. Jesus says that only those who persevere to the end will be saved. Barnabas exhorted the first Christians at Antioch to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast purpose. St. Paul's exhortation to his Christians was to be constant in prayer and to keep alert in perseverance. And the book of Hebrews exhorts us that we run with perseverance, the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. How do we know a person who is faithful? Whether the person be a priest, a consecrated person, or a married person. The person who is faithful takes seriously the importance of keeping vows or commitments made to God. 
there is constant effort to reject selfishness and to discipline desires and expectations. Because even after we have made a vow, in any of those three states, human weakness will present a person with temptations as a result of weakness. The faithful person appreciates that we grow, not by asking what we can get or grab, but by giving of ourselves gratuitously. The one who gives self gratuitously, self-sacrifice, that means the one who is constant in keeping the vow, grows as a priest, as a religious, or as a married person. Every state of life has its crisis moments, times of trial, difficulty or temptation. These are not indications that one should abandon one's vocation. Rather, they are invitations to a positive resolution, to deepen commitment, and to seek more mature and robust growth. Every state of life has crisis which invites us to grow deeper, to grow more mature in our original commitment. When a crisis has been successfully overcome, the person who has overcome the crisis looks back with serenity, with joy, with contentment, and with thanksgiving to God for having remained constant. The one who fails, who surrenders, is not happy when that person looks back. The person's self-image is not happy. We do not solve a difficult algebra homework by declaring algebra unimportant, or worse still, by burning the algebra book. <laughs> the professor of mathematics has a better solution and a more dynamic one. Learn to do algebra. Don't condemn it. Don't burn the book. That's not the solution. We do not solve a headache by cutting off the head. <laughs> the doctor or even the nurse has a better solution and a healthier one, which will allow you to keep the head. <laughs> we don't solve a marriage by getting half a dozen lawyers to arrange divorce. There is a better solution. We don't solve a crisis in the priesthood or religious life by shooting in all directions where the bishop is or the religious superior. There is a better solution. It is also wrong to maintain that a human being should not be bound for one's whole life by a vow or commitment made in one moment. Because there are people who hold that view, that a vow made in one moment shouldn't bind one person for the person's whole life. Unacceptable. We cannot accept that. The whole of church history and the history of humanity the corridors of history are full of great figures who have been luminaries of humanity, both in the church and in science and in industry and in the state. Great people who have remained constant. It is not true that a human being cannot remain constant in a vow made in one moment. How many moments, anyhow, do you need to make a vow? However, if a person wants to remain constant, then the person must be willing to adopt the means. If you want omelette, you must bring eggs. It is not enough for a person to resolve to remain faithful in a vocation. It is also necessary that the person will adopt the means necessary for perseverance. Here are elements of means common for perseverance in all the three vocations we mentioned already. It is indispensable that the person understand the vocation in question, be convinced of his exalted nature, 
be prepared initially for entry into that vocation, be prepared initially, and also undertake ongoing formation for strengthening and updating in that state of life. All state of life necessitate continuous updating and ongoing formation. There's no question of formation once and for all, whether for priesthood or religious life or marriage. One must continue making the effort. The one who rides a bicycle must continue making effort to continue riding the bicycle. Otherwise, he and the bicycle will be on the ground. A fundamental attitude of willingness to sacrifice oneself is necessary for perseverance in all vocations. Egoists who seek only their personal gain or convenience in a vocation are not likely to succeed in any vocation. An egoist is not going to succeed in any vocation. For example, if an egoist is a priest and he abandons the priesthood, he will probably blame the parishioners and the bishop. If he marries a wife, too bad for that woman. <laughs> she will soon find out the same thing that the parishioners found out long ago. Now this is the center of the earthquake. There are spiritual qualities of virtue. Now I do not mean by that to say that everybody is suited for priesthood, no. But that if egoism is the, prop, is the cause of the problem, the person moving to another state of life will bring along the same egoism. The imitation of Christ said, the change of place has deceived many. And it also says, situations don't make a person what he is, but they show what he is. There are spiritual qualities or virtues which are needed for success in all vocations with obvious emphasis needed for each state. Fundamental necessary qualities are union with God, familiarity with Holy Scripture, sacramental life, especially with reference to Holy Eucharist, penance lived as virtue and as sacrament, prayer, both liturgical and personal, and love of the church. These apply to all vocations. For all states of life, it is important to bear in mind that God wants our cooperation. St. Augustine of North Africa, God who created us without our cooperation will not justify us without our cooperation. At the same time, we should be realistic and humble. That is, we should listen to the same St. Augustine who tells us that since it is grace that effects in us all our good and meritable works, when God crowns our merits, he is only crowning his own gifts. So while we cannot, while we, God wants us to cooperate with his grace, for our salvation and justification. Nevertheless, even our cooperation with God's grace is grace. And the things we have achieved are merits of God's gifts. So God, by crowning our gifts, is crowning his own gift, his own works. When I was doing my silver golden jubilee as a priest last December, the people were praising me. And I said to them, if a person wears a good suit, you praise the tailor. <laughs> and one of my priests, who was my friend, said, yeah, but you have to praise the fellow who wears it if he doesn't wear it properly. <laughs> Perhaps. That will be the section of our cooperation with God's grace. But God's grace goes before, during, and at the end. All through. We absolutely need God's grace to begin, to continue, and to bring to a happy conclusion our good works. There's no such thing as we doing the whole thing ourselves. 
Not at all. You notice the Blessed Virgin Mary? She was great, masterpiece of God's creation. Elizabeth praised her. Blessed are you who have believed that the things told you by the Lord will be fulfilled. And the Blessed Virgin Mary didn't deny. She said, oh, the Almighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name. He has raised the small people from below and exalted them. As for the rich people, he sent them home packing with nothing. Put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. The Almighty has done great things for me. She didn't deny that God has given her great gifts, but she gave the credit not to herself, but to God. In the ordination rite of a deacon or a priest or a bishop, the bishop says to the person to be ordained, may God who has begun the good work in you himself bring it to fulfillment. We could say the same to those about to be married. Unfortunately, they are often worried more about the pictures to be taken and the rice that will be thrown around them afterwards and all the, the meal that will be 12 courses lasting four hours. <laughs> Each particular vocation will need specific preparation. These general means to faithfulness can now be applied briefly to each of the three vocations that we have been considering. Priests will give particular importance to life of union with Christ, the chief shepherd, the chief priest, living in unity of the presbyterium in communion with the diocesan bishop and his priests, pastoral charity towards the people committed to their care. Consecrated people, monks, nuns, um, brothers, sisters, members of Catholic corps, and other forms of consecrated life, they need to pay particular attention to the demands of the three evangelical councils of chastity, poverty, and obedience, to community life, especially with reference to prayer, meals together, recreation together, and fidelity to the charism of the founder. Married people should take seriously the importance of growth in human maturity as men and women, acceptance of sexuality according to God's plan, genuine love of the spouse and the life partner as one's way to holiness, and the rejection of divorce because it is a false solution. It is no solution at all. They can also profit from participation in some of the family enhancement programs approved by the church. For instance, the Apostolate for Family Consecration, the Marriage Encounter Weekend, the Christian Family Movement, and others. The Compendium of the Social Doctrine of the Church rightly says, the nature of conjugal love requires the stability of the married relationship and its indissolubility. The absence of these characteristics compromises the relationship of exclusive and total love that is proper to the marriage bond, bringing great pain to the children and damaging repercussions also on the fabric of society. Congratulations, Father Bernard, because you have verified in your life these qualities that I have been listing here. There is a rosary for you from the Holy Father. <laughs> Please. Would you be willing to take it now? It's just symbolic. The 12 mysteries of the rosary, as you all notice, they are Christocentric from number one to number 18. And number 19 and 20, it is indeed Mary, but it is still Christ elevating her to heaven and crowning her. Congratulations, Matt. You are, are as, as, Coming into this world, you are one year older than me, but as a priest, you are just six months after me. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Brothers and sisters, we, need, we kneel in front of divine providence who has prepared for each of us a vocation. Fidelity to our vocation will give us joy, will give us peace, will give us unity, and give us a sense of direction in life. We will not be people going on a journey who have forgotten where they are going. Let us pray to the most blessed Virgin Mary, Virgin most faithful, to obtain for each of us faithfulness, perseverance, 
joy, and generosity in our vocation and mission. Thank you for your patience.